All right, so in this lecture, we are going to be writing our first super simple code with Puppeteer. So the joy of writing code is what the whole course is all about. Because as you can see that JavaScript by itself is kind of very, very popular among community, not just by testers, it's actually for developers and testers are still catching up with this language because there are so many different language versions uh, available within this particular JavaScript, something like ECMAScript. 4, ECMAScript 5, or they also call it as ES2015, and they call ES2016 or ECMAScript 6, and then came ES7, and then came ES8, and now it is ES9, which is ECMAScript 9, which is 2019, and then there is much future versions if you want to try out, you can use what is called as ESNext. So there are many different versions available, but if you could see as holistically for the testers, we don't use a lot of JavaScript in any means for our testing, at least a lot like developers, but we need to know some of the concept on JavaScript while we start working with this course. And we are going to be writing very, very super simple code in this particular course as an initial phase, but later in this course, we'll be writing uh, some complex codes in JavaScript because that's what make your code more robust and more extendable. So as that said, in this particular lecture, we are going to be writing a very, very super simple code so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this as EA test, which is something about execute automation test. And then I'm going to call this as JS. So this is a JavaScript file in any means. And we need to, of course, use this uh, JavaScript file for our execution. And as that said, I'm going to first execute a code or a program using this particular ES, EA test.js file. In order to execute that, I can probably write a method but in JavaScript, there is something available what is called as ify or IIFE, which is nothing but immediately invoked functional expression. So this is something which you don't really need to have a function body. Uh, rather, you can directly use and code something like this. So this is like an immediately invoked uh, function expression. Using this particular body, you can directly execute your code and see what's really going on, which is kind of pretty, pretty awesome. And you can easily use that for executing your code. And as that said, we are going to be running this particular code using uh, the Node.js. So what you're going to do is you're going to do something like this, like Node, and then you're going to uh, specify something called as EA test.js. So this will execute the code for you. That's it. But since we have not written anything in here, the code is not going to execute. Rather, you can just do a console.log and say, hi guys, and just save it. And now if I try to run this, you can see that it prints hi guys. So it's an immediately invoked functional expression method. And that's what we'll be using for executing our code. And as I said, this code block seems to be executing something while we do this guy, the node EA test.js. So why not just extend this code writing uh, it for the puppeteer test as well. So in puppeteer test for writing a super simple code, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do maybe and importing the puppeteer itself. So I'm going to do something like this. Puppeteer is equal to require of the puppeteer. This is the one which we installed in our previous video. So I'm just going to call this guy. And then in here, I'm going to be calling our puppeteer dot. And you can see there are so many different methods available, something like connect or create browser fetcher, and then executable path, launch and stuffs. Right. So this is kind of very handy. Now you can see that something is happening once I import this particular package or require this particular package. So I'm saying import, don't confuse it yet. We are going to be changing this ECMAScript 5 coding. So this coding practice is called as ECMAScript 5 or ES5. We're going to be converting this to ECMAScript 6 in our future video. Don't worry about all these things in the first video of writing a code. We'll be talking about that in our future videos. And as that said, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a constant in JavaScript, like browser. And over here, I'm going to use an await. You can ask me why I'm using an await. The reason is because the puppeteer dot launch method, if you see in here, this launch method is 
actually an asynchronous method. So since it is an asynchronous method, it returns you a promise of the browser. And since it returns a promise, it has to be resolved. So basically in JavaScript, everything has to be resolved uh, if it is returning a promise because it's an asynchronous programming. And because it has to be resolved asynchronously, I'm using an await so that I can wait for the browser to launch, right? So this will launch a browser for me. And then I'm going to do a constant of uh, maybe a page is equal to a weight of browser dot and you can see there's a whole lot of methods coming in once I hit this particular browser and guys this is the power of Visual Studio Code it shows you the intelligence much easily and it's really cool to see that it brings you up things very very clearly more like Visual Studio C sharp code or IntelliJ Java code right so you can just use this uh, to brings up the intelligence and now you can just do something called as a new page to open up a new page for you and once you have this you can then try to navigate to a page and since you're going to navigate to the page you can just do like page dot there is something called as go to method pretty familiar if you're, you're coming from the selenium background you can just use the go to and then it tells you which uh, what you have to do so basically you're going to put a url here and the URL that I'm going to be putting is my uh, Exit Automation demo site URL. So I'm just going to uh, copy, uh, paste this particular URL over here. That's it. And this will navigate me to this particular page. But now what happens essentially in here is since I'm not going to put an await in here, this particular code may not execute as expected because this is an asynchronous code, guys. So in order for resolving that, you have to put an await for each and every lines of code, which is asynchronous. And as I said, this is the first code that we'll be writing in our, uh, in our lecture. So I'm going to save this guy and then I'm going to execute node eatest.js. So once I execute this, what essentially is going to happen is it's going to spawn a browser for us and then it's gonna run, or maybe it's gonna uh, launch this particular page, and then it's gonna execute it. But as you can see, we have opened the browser, we did this, but we need to also close the browser. And since we have not closed the browser, the browser is somehow opened somewhere in my machine, and it's running it, and it is not even closed. So since we can't able to see this, what's really happening behind the scene, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this test and within this launch method you can see once I hover there it sh shows me some launch options. So what is this option basically? If I open the braces here and once I hit control space you can see that it brings me up a whole lot of properties available. And some of the interesting properties which I'm interested in is the headless property. So what is this headless property basically doing? So the headless property basically says that you're going to set the default mode of the headless from true to false, which means you will now see the browser being spawned once you run this particular test. There you go. And that's what happened behind the scene while we executed the code while the headless was off. So once you say that the headless was on, so once you say the headless is false, which means you're making its head full, and now the browser has been spawned in here for you, for your disposal. And now since we have ran this particular uh, page to navigate, we now have to somehow close the browser. In order to close the browser, as you know, you have to use not the page, but the browser property. And then you got to do what is called as a close. That's it. So this way, this will close the browser for you and now i'm just going to stop the test and i'm going to run this again so you can see it opens the browser navigated and closed and the program got terminated as well so this way this particular asynchronous code has been executed so what happened is like it opened the browser and it was awaiting for the execution to complete and that's the reason this particular asynchronous be in is being used in here and the code was still running awaiting for the next operation to happen and that's the power of asynchronous programming and that's how we write our super simple code with javascript 
In our next video, we'll discuss even more about the browsers and also the pages in much greater detail. Thank you.